to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crack a jack. Well, in the, in the old days, I can remember when there were young high school boys behind the auxiliary scoreboard, and they had little plaques made of tin, and they would hang them up as inning after inning passed by, showing the Yankees scored two runs, they would get a tin and put two up. If the visiting teams had a zero, they would put a zero up. Uh, this was true in the left field, and in the right field, the auxiliary scoreboards. Then out in the center field, there were other men, grown men, who not only put up the score, but also put up who was coming to bat and uh, uh, who the pitcher was and so on, with little tin plates with the numbers on them. Uh, I remember as time went on, there was a fellow named Ray Sanzi who sat in the press box and he had like a walkie-talkie that would carry out to the center field scoreboard, the major scoreboard, and he would, uh, uh, this was a great advance, balls and strikes, and he would sit in the scoreboard and in this little walkie-talkie would say, ball one, strike one, and the men out there would be able to put up because they were so far away, they couldn't interpret the umpire's signals. Uh, uh, it was crude, but I can remember Ray Sanzi year after year after year sitting there calling every ball, every strike into his little walkie-talkie to the men out in center field. <clears throat> I had remembered in my early days as a high school boy when the public address announcer was somebody on the field itself with a huge megaphone, nothing electronic. And he would go behind home plate hold the megaphone up and say, the batteries for today are, and he would announce the visiting pitcher and the visiting catcher. Then he would do the home pitcher and the home catcher. This man, again with his megaphone, would walk behind first base and tell those people who was pitching and catching. Then he would walk across to third base and do the same thing. That was the beginning of public address announcing as I saw it as a young boy. Then it became electronic. And when I came here 42 years ago, the press box was over near third base, between home plate and third base. It was open. There was no protection there. I had my microphone, but it was not as highly developed electronically as it is now. But I can remember the uh, electrician sitting next to me with a turntable. And when I told the crowd to rise, they would put a needle down on uh, a 78 record and a band would play the national anthem or somebody would sing the national anthem. And four or five times a year, the needle would skip from one groove to another and the general manager of the Yankees, George Weiss, would be furious. And he would come down and say, get another record, get another record. And the electrician would be so embarrassed because the needle skipped from one groove to another. It doesn't happen today when we have outstanding electronic people handling the equipment or we have a fabulous organist who never makes a mistake. I gotta tell you, I have never seen a baseball game ever. My hometown happens to be Philadelphia. And, uh, you know, that's a big baseball town. But uh, I have never been to a baseball game. I did not know where first base was. In fact, my very first time here at Yankee Stadium, exactly 25 years ago when I first came with the Yankees, uh, Mickey Mantle was up at bat, and he hit a home run out over that there in right field. And uh, at that time, the organ was in the press area where the working press was located. 
And I ran down to Red Foley and, and some of the guys who were working for the Post and the news and the whatever papers were around at that time. And I said, Mickey hit the ball, and he, but how come he's running around the bases the wrong way? I didn't know you were supposed to go this way. I thought it was this way. So, no, I never saw a baseball game in my life. Strangely enough, uh, you know, we have a very, very, very expensive sound system now, and it's one of the best in the country of all the stadiums right now. But when I came here, the uh, Oregon speakers were two big, gigantic loudspeakers sitting. Let me check over here. Let me just look. Right out near where the flagpole is. Can everybody see the flagpole out in center field? The, and right on the floor, as we say, on the ground, were two big, huge speakers. Those were for the Oregon. And strangely enough, it cut and it carried. The bass was terrific, the mid-range and highs. Wrong. But everything is timing. If I ha have a man, the Yankees are at first and third base, and it's the bottom of the ninth right now, and we're tied, and we're going to go into extra innings. My goodness, 19 innings, let's say. I want to go home also. So do the ball players. So I'll play something that I think will get all the fans aroused and, and up in arms and clapping or say the charge or all the other things that I play uh, to do, such as uh, when you hear clap, 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 things like that. And uh, most of these melodies are known by everyone. The scoreboard at the stadium, of course, was always in the same place, way out in a little bit to the right of center field, I think. Uh, hopefully, hopefully these comments will be accurate because that's 25 years ago, and uh, the scoreboard, someone was at an air-conditioned booth in the old stadium, the old scoreboard, dropping numbers down, uh, two, three, or four, or Yankees, 22, Cleveland, zip. So, oh, that's untrue, believe <laughs> me. But uh, if, if you know what I mean, they were, they were uh, dropping those numbers down manually. Now we have, of course, the Matrix board. It's called Matrix. Let's say I'm going to play... Uh, New York, New York, like this. And so forth. This, using bar the various, uh, we have a fan out there, I, no I noticed. Uh, various effects of the instrument, so of which there are probably a couple of hundred thousand effects that I can create from this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, in the late 30s and 40s, it was uh, it was a huge scoreboard. It, unlike today, it was a manually operated, and it was in that right center field section. In fact, I can always remember they had it propped up with great big, uh, almost like telephone poles. And uh, in those days, the ballparks had great scoreboards, the New York parks, because they gave out-of-town games inning by inning. Uh, you know, today you have the electric board, it'll say the fifth inning, you know, Mets three, Cubs two or something. In those days, it gave each inning, inning by inning. And uh, I can remember in the polo grounds, if a club, if you were watching an out-of-town game at this time of the year, you know, maybe the Cardinals and somebody were in a race, uh, if somebody scored or was in the process of scoring more than a few runs, the guy used to drop the number down and jiggle it to catch your attention. You know, he'd put a three or a four up for somebody. And uh, although today with the electric boards and everything, it's, it's all very fancy, but uh, some of us still like the old boards, like at Wrigley Field. That's the only one left. Well, uh, Fenway Park in left field still has a manually operated scoreboard. Uh, Ebbets Field had a scoreboard that uh, was that way. In fact, I can remember a fellow with whom I used to work at the news years ago. He was an old Dodger fan in the 20s and 30s, and he said he remembered when it was, the numbers were put up on hooks. And uh, Cubs had come in with Hack Wilson, Roger Hornsby, Stevenson, these guys were hammerers. And he said the guy had had the board all set up. All of a sudden, somebody hit a ball off the scoreboard. All the numbers would fall off, or most of them. And the guy would go out between innings to pick them up off the grass. By the time he got them hung up again, here come those guys again hitting. You don't have that anymore. 